Welcome to another episode of Dungeon Boys. Last week, Grimm was blown off the back of an army ship as he and Duncan are trying to destroy them before they make purchase on the city of Buckland. Meanwhile, Arlo, Jack, and Eros are trying to consume the city of Buckland inside Moradin's tiny orb. How's all that going to go? Find out in this episode of Dungeon Boys. Um, anyway, you successfully light the fuse. The dynamite is burning. And you hold the shield in front of you and you're able to fall back and not land flat on your back, but you land on your head and shoot into the water, you know, Olympic diver style. Water surrounds your ears and you hear a sound above you first. Bright, bright light from the sparks of clashing metal are shooting out. The fourth, the force of the charge blows through the water and pushes you deeper down as you splash into the water. Your charge has gone off on the back of this ship. You can see through salty eyes the hole of in the back bottom of this ship. I need you to roll damage for one of these sticks of dynamite. I need you to roll. Oh, excuse me. I need you to roll ten d eight damage. Does he need to roll for having salty eyes? No, not here. Yes, okay. And then I then I also need to you need you to roll a D twenty. Because what I'm determining is the percentage of things that will not make it off this ship. Forty nine. Forty nine. For the D twenty roll. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, oh wait, no, okay, no, hang on, stop doing that. That you so think Sirenscape has an above water explosion heard from underwater sound effect? <laughs> Maybe. I think so. <laughs> 13. Right. 13. So this is the Add those together. 62. 62. Excellent. What are you saying? I was debating whether or not I should use. You my actually got 12 hour inspiration. Yeah, I got 49. Isn't that like the highest you can possibly roll? No, it would have been 80. Yeah. You roll 8d10. Oh, 8d10. 10d8. No, 10d8, excuse me. 10d8. The same thing, but yeah. No, I was just debating whether or not I should use the inspiration roll on this. Mm. You're welcome to if you like. No. Okay, we're going to... 62% of things that were aboard this ship will not survive this. I just tried to think of a mechanic that would, you know, if you did it perfectly, the ship goes down instantly, everybody dies, blah, blah, blah. But of course, I'm not saying that you can't. Whatever you want to do to increase that percentage, whatever. I'm just saying, initially, this blast is going to, 62% of this, uh, the things aboard this ship will no longer be working. But you can tell, you can hear as water is being sucked into this ship, and you can see the rear of it beginning to like lower down like you have, this ship is taking a beating. If The only thing that's getting off of this ship are landing craft. This thing is not making it. To Buckland. This big ship is gone. You're sinking. But also, what you heard initially was the explosion above water. You also, off to your <laughs> left, you know, you went to the right ship facing it, right? Yeah, so facing it, they're coming toward me. I went this way, he went there. Right, so now facing the direction they're traveling, to your right should be two ships. Yes. Off to your right, about 200 feet away or so. You can't really tell you're underwater. It's sloshing. The sound of a depth charge goes off. <laughs> Dynamite exploding underwater. Roll a constitution saving throw from them eardrums, daddy -o. My eardrums. I wouldn't 17. Even 17. We're going to we're going to say you only take a d a d8 of damage. I'm going to roll some damage for your eardrums. You don't punch with them eardrums anyway. Only take 2 damage to your eardrums. Boy, you got that tight drum. <laughs> <laughs> the right. sound bounces off your eardrum and you turn and you see the explosion of Duncan's uh, dynamite exploding under the water something has gone wrong underneath the explosion roll perception sorry freaking Duncan <laughs> where is it 25 Underneath the explosion, traveling quickly to the bottom on the <laughs> of the ocean, <laughs> is Duncan. You can see him. He's okay. You can see him concentrating really hard to become mist again. He is like, <laughs> and he is like a missile <laughs> going to the bottom. Head like a first. long dart. <laughs> yeah. Feet first or head first? 
Okay. <laughs> first. Okay. Thinking quickly. He's concentrating, yeah. Grim's going to do the same. He's focusing on what Duncan said. He's going to turn to mist. His target is the second ship in the middle. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, because Duncan looks all right. He doesn't look injured. It looks like an issue with the dynamite. He looks like some, maybe it didn't stick or whatever. But at this point, your sh- that one ship is, you know, the ship you blew up, you look up, it is, if there, if there were sirens going off, you'd hear, as this red light's flashing, this thing is going down. That's some Star Wars sirens. Yeah, there are, um, there are, or- there's some orcs in the water. There are orcs wow. trying to swim. Right beside you, a dead orc is floating, covered in his armor, just sinking to the bottom almost dead, like clawing, trying to swim, but his armor's too heavy, traveling down beside you. Like, you've, you've, you've made some kills already. Um, but you successfully, after a minute, turn back into mist. Um, and as soon as you turn back into mist, you look down to your right, you no longer see Duncan. He's either traveled so deep into the ocean that you can't see him, or Just... he is also miss, um, <coughs> mist. So well, you... He will be. <laughs> <laughs> Second point of inspiration. <laughs> if I could get that's a common oh. point of inspiration. Use it for free laughs on your next joke. <laughs> um, well done. Very well done. Uh, you said it should be a t shirt. You said something We're just going in there right there. You said something in one of the recent episodes that all all we could all say was like if that's not an episode break right there, it's got we or we gotta at least take it. That's why I, I put another sponsorship thing in earlier <laughs> anyway we'll um, see it next week yeah you'll see it nice. soon no it's available oh definitely available for people hearing this now also you could hear it anyway you shoot out of the water as mist what are you doing uh head and flying so does it look like there's no like small holes into the interior of the ship which ship? Uh, or like, I assume the second... I'm going for the middle ship. Yeah. I'm just dashing that way. Mm-hmm. Um, does it look similar to the first one? Yeah, it's the same. They're, they're, they're all three identical right. ships. The only thing different is the image of which mage is on the front of the ship. Mm-hmm. Um, it takes you a second to catch up because they're, yeah. you know, they're continued... The two are continuing to travel. The one that you blew up is definitely stationary. As you go up as well with that 25 perception roll earlier, you can see into the hull of the ship... And you can see the the wooden the wooden and metal lashed together landing craft. Mm. They were inside the hull of the ship. Several of them are destroyed. You can see landing craft like leaking out the bottom of the back of this boat as the water goes in, and they're sinking landing craft going down. There are now like tens, twenties, thirties, forties of orcs floating down to the bottom of the ocean, falling out of the back of this hole. They were obviously in the landing craft, ready to land when you blew a hole in the back of the boat. Um, you don't see every th- all the contents, but you do see some of that happening. But you are rocketing towards the other ship, I assume. Mm-hmm. Um, is there like a way? Are there like holes in like like little bits? Huh? I'm trying to think. Um, but you said there's like a, a thing, like a hole going up where the spindly part mm-hmm. is, right? Yep. There's nothing else around that's like that hole. No, not really. It's pretty yeah. sealed off back there. Um, Talking about around the rudder, right? Yeah, yeah. around the rudder. Right. For, for exactly. people playing the home game. Yeah. Um, so, because I don't have any goo left, so is does it? What does it look like? I could stick it to if I, I could. Mean, I stick you, it to the if rudder? you were to mist up there into that platform, mm-hmm. um, you know, there's plenty of places that you could just set it down and it's not going anywhere. You okay. could like put it beside behind the a turn, you know, the mechanism that turns the rudder. There are plenty of little, you know, there's a it's a very small compartment. You'd be packed in there pretty tight as a big bad boy Grim, but uh, you could definitely mist in there and transform and have enough room to place some dynamite. I want I want to sink the ship. I want it to go okay. down. I mean, you got rope on you. I know. Yeah, I do. Um, you go like into the ship. That's what I'm thinking. I can go 60 miles an hour. I wonder how far in I could get. But then there are orcs in there. By the looks of the one you just are in the process of sinking, a lot. Like, I love Grim, and I'm confident in his ability to do combat, but, like, if one of the <clears throat> many options go wrong, you die in that boat. Yeah, there's a lot to go wrong. Well, I could just... But I love the idea. Throw it, and then just... Yeah, just <laughs> jump out of there. Um... You could. It takes a minute to change back. You got a minute long fuse. Yeah. You could fly up to the crow's nest, 
light it, drop it, and change back before it blows. <laughs> you probably wouldn't hit the bottom, though. Um, I don't know. So many decisions. I'm I'm going to... You're such, flying on your feet. It's I'm going to stick it in the in the little section up there. Okay, the gotcha. Hole. I imagine it's close to the hull of the ship as well, like where that back wall. You want yeah. to take something out. Um, yeah, I want to I do that. Get okay. up in there. You missed. Light it. Full fuse this time. And then missed out and go to the other ship. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so you light it. Uh, you will, if you light this fuse, you will be turning into mist instantly whenever this thing blows up, as you know, as long as the timer is appropriate. It's not magical, right? Huh? It's not magical, right? No, it's just a force. It's, it's force damage. Yeah, I get you. Uh, you're also mist. Um, you, so you don't take any damage, right? No, you take. He you takes resistance. Oh, he has yeah. resistance, so. Okay. <laughs> Half as much. All right. So uh, you do that. You go inside this other ship. You transform. You're packed in there very tightly. Um, but you jam. You you place uh, this stick of dynamite behind the mechanism. Uh, you slip it in there. And you light the fuse. And taking as much time as you as you can, you focus very, very hard. Roll... Roll Arcana for me. Let's let's give you. I'm gonna give you a chance. Roll. How magical are you? Eleven. Eleven is not magical enough, unfortunately. I'm you, exactly. It, it, Eleven magical. <laughs> it takes you. <laughs> it takes you a full minute. So as soon as you turn into mist and you're coming out of that bottom hole, kaboom! <laughs> the dynamite blows up. Roll. It takes my mist body like a full hour to recon. <laughs> <Yeah>. recon- <laughs> <laughs> Roll a uh, another. 10 D8s and then a D20. <coughs> How do I get to the roller boy again? How do I do it? I forget. This? No. No, yes, discard. How do I do that? Oh, right here. 45. Okay, so you take half of that. If you have resistance, take half of that damage. 56. 56. Okay, mm-hmm. so again, a little bit less this time. So whatever half of 45 is, you'll take that damage. Don't add the d20 to it. This is a made-up mechanic for dynamite on boats. If Matt Mercer, if you're listening, tell me how I could have done it better. Grim, okay. Yeah, <laughs> Grim is alive. So you, you like whatever mist feels like getting hit by dynamite, pss, getting sprayed out. You know, you feel like you're at a theme park and being blown on some fat guy's face in the <laughs> in line for the Jurassic Park ride. <laughs> <laughs> that is a sensation you never thought you'd experience. But can guess mist what? Vomit. <laughs> oh, we can now. Um, but you blow another hole in the back of this boat, and a giant crack <laughs> cracks down into the water. This ship is sinking, but not as quickly as the other one. This ship also looks like it's probably not going to make it to the shore. But there are going to be probably more time for the orcs to right themselves and figure out how to get off of those landing craft. You're not seeing a bunch of landing craft spill out the bottom, but you you definitely blew a large hole into the back of the ship. You think you did some damage. The ship is definitely not making it to Buffalo. May I ask a question of the DM? Of course you may. In your scenario, what is a landing craft? Because um, so far we've seen like horse and buggy kind of stuff. I am picturing... Uh, non-motorized, you know, look like the like D-Day landing craft. That's what they look like. They're, you know, they've got paddles, though. They don't have like motors. A slightly rounded box. Yeah, kind of like a shoe box with a lip on the front. Okay. They've got oars and things. Gotcha. And some of them have other means of propulsion that you've not seen. Propulsion. Proper propulsion. Propulsion. Got it. All right, but you are, you know, are you're missed now in the air behind this ship, and this ship has been disabled um, quite handily. And as you come out, you see on the back of the other ship a dwarf, a dwarf is back holding on to the rudder, very similar to the way you were, and he doesn't have any, um, he doesn't have any dynamite, so he's got an axe in one hand, and he's just chopping at the back of this boat. <laughs> trying to break through. Um, and he's, Come on, you stupid sop! <laughs> As he's clanging into the back of the back of this boat. So is this how Duncan learned how to swim? He just took both axes and just started flailing <laughs> at the water? He missed it back up. Oh, okay, there yeah. you go. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go over there, and I want to, I want to like just hover around until uh-huh. he makes a hole in the, the ship. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to like, 
freaking mime to him, I guess, to get out of the way <laughs> so I can get there. Okay. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to mime as can well. Can I form into an arrow and just get off? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you are you are mist, right? You're visible mist. So you appear around him, and he's like, "Oh, Grim, I'm glad you're here. Cook, cook. I dropped my dynamite. I couldn't get it stuck to the wall. Cook, cook, cook. I'm praying I could cut through the hole, brother. Cook, cook, cook. I'm tired, brother. I can't swim. I'm almost drowned. Cook, cook, cook. From above, you hear, "What is all that racket?" I want to like. <laughs> Do I have a semi-humanoid shape in mist form, or is it just a cloud? It's just, just like, like a, a cloud. cloud. cloud of mist. Can I, like, a make one cloud. small little proboscis, like, <laughs> to come out and put, to pat him on his shoulder? I was going to say, it'd be really bad if he, like, had this whole conversation <laughs> twice before with, like, a passing whisper. Be- because I love the word proboscis. A little proboscis, bit of fog goes by. <laughs> of course. You can, you, can, you can do a misty proboscis, if okay. you will. I'm also, gonna... band name. Sto- that's my band name. No one who's listening can have it. <laughs> Misty Probuskis. I want to like... We'll get the shirts ready. <laughs> as, as he keeps going and as he gets like a hole in it, or right, as close to one as possible, yeah. like like when it's just the opportune time, I want to like Probuskis' yeah. shoulder. He eventually... <clears throat> his arm goes farther in. Okay. He's busted a, a gap in there. He swings... He, he just keeps swinging though. Choo, choo, choo. So I'm trying to make a hole big enough for a stick of dynamite, brother. And he... Choo, choo. And eventually a hole just big enough for you to slot a, pe- a stick of dynamite appears. And he says, it's up to you. And he hops, he hops <laughs> off the ship. And just... <laughs> it's like one of those Olympic high divers that barely makes a splash. <laughs> he just, he's just like, like a perfect poop. <laughs> Is it the one drop that follows up above him? <laughs> Poseidon's kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I got the Laffy Burks. Go hear Poseidon's kiss. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I only heard of it because of you. <laughs> As he goes in the water, a single drop from his splash com- comes up and lands on your butt, Grim. <laughs> no, it doesn't. They're getting off the rails. This he does is, jump this up. This is a bad show. Y'all shouldn't watch yeah. this. <laughs> He jumps Kids, up. Close your ears. <laughs> close he says, your ears. <laughs> he says, "I think the I th- I think that hole's big enough for a stick of dynamite. It's up to you. I got none left." And he hops off and boom, boom, boom goes into the water with a th- with a thumb up. He splashes like, "Don't worry about me. I'll I'll, I'll be I'll be fine. I'll be back." So, Terminator two style. Yeah, yeah. but much um, faster. <laughs> and, then, and then uh. You're going to turn back human? Yeah, I take roll, his place. Roll strength for me. Strength. Strength. I hope you guys will uh, either communicate with us via Twitter, at Tank Media Games, or email or something, and let us know if you like this show. I'm tired of making something so good for y'all to not talk about. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> also, yeah. go to the Forge section of the Discord. Yes. Come up with some D&D ideas. May use them. May make fun of them. Who knows? You may use them to insult me. Also, we have a support group if you have experienced Poseidon's kiss. <laughs> Especially from someone else. Oh. <laughs> Twenty. It's difficult to do. You're absolutely successful in holding on to that rudder you are you have replaced him. Roll perception check. Bro, What's in that hole? That would take bro? practice. What's in that hole? Seventeen. You look in, you can all you can hear is the it is all kerfuffle in there. Ooh. Oh, no. Uh, lots loud of loud, loud chanting. You hear orcs yelling, "What's going on? Our ships are going down." Um, uh, that's a different accent. It's like Duncan's inside. <laughs> What's going on? One of the ships is sinking. I both is sinking. And you hear other people steal yourselves, men. We've still got a job to do. Stay in your landing craft. We're gonna launch. Um, and at, you can see all that happening through this hole. So. You're ready to go. Okay. I'm going to stick the dynamite in there. I'm going to light it at the two-second mark. Okay. I'm going to... Two-second or two-inch? <laughs> two-inch. Okay. Right, yeah, sorry, two-inch, so like Boom. 12 seconds. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm going to just like... 
I'm not gonna punch it. I'm gonna like put my hand like where the fuse is here, so yeah. I'm gonna put it out. I understand. And I'm gonna just just shove it in there and okay. then kick off again. Okay. So you do that. Mm-hmm. On your way down, you hear, "What the hell is?" <laughs> the explosion is grand. Shrapnel blow. You blow off the back of the ship. Roll the damage. This ship is going down to. So this is all down to dynamite. I would have like halfway expected Grim just to like grab hold of one of the rudders and yeah. like, steer one of the boats into the other one. Yeah. Um. Can I use the inspiration on this? Of course one? you may. Okay. Because mm-hmm. yeah. this one really kind of sucks. Um. Well, forty-five. Well, you have two different inspirations. I was gonna use the the beer inspiration. Okay. No, I was saying if you want to use another one, you're welcome. No, it's okay. Okay. 45. 45. All right. No comedy inspiration. No, no comedy inspiration. That one's for jokes. <coughs> that one's for jokes. <coughs> so I'm taking half of the 35? But you want um, to laugh at that No, no, you, no, make, no you made it to the water yeah. on that one. No, you're good. That was just no damage on that one. Again, I mean, I'm a, I'm a sucker for a 20-second super cool action shot. Honestly, I would love to have a YouTube series where I just try to recreate 20-second cool action shots. But the idea of, like, Plugging a hole with dynamite and just like piecing out off a boat and splashing into the water as it explodes above you. So cool. Coming next summer. <laughs> All right. So that being said, you have you have blown many orcs to smithereens. <laughs> at this point, totaling right at about fifty percent of all the orcs on these boats are either dead or unable to travel to where they need to get to go. You have percent. 50. You you have cut a little over half of their forces down, and that was, we said that there was approximately like 300 orcs per boat. So you and Duncan, as two people, have just um, taken out 50 right here from Jump Street. So what is it, you guys, before we cut back to what Eros is doing and, and Jack, or Jack and Arlo are doing, um, what is your plan now as you land in the water? Um, I'm just going to head straight back to the guys. I don't have any more dynamite. I don't have any, anything else that can really do any damage to these people. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to head. Another thing is you have effectively slowed them down. What you see as you pass over, um, back towards town, what you see as you pass over the front of these ships is those cargo doors are now open and there are <coughs> landing craft coming out of them. These these kind of shoebox looking landing craft. There are orcs rowing their way out of there. Several of them are injured, holding their heads. As you look kind of backwards as you fly away and see inside the ships, there, you know, there you see that there was probably maybe about ten in each of these ships. Only five per are getting out. You have taken out five you know, there are only like five little landing craft holding about ten orcs apiece coming out. You have slowed them down exceedingly because they're a couple miles from shore now and they've got a row there instead of sailing there but on a select few landing craft there is an orc mage standing on the back with his hand towards the water and you can see the water swirling and these are jetting out ahead of the other ones it's evan rude yeah <laughs> <laughs> what's what's your name <laughs> my name's evan rude sir i got dreams of making fishing boats <laughs> not fucking in this army anyway um so that's what you see. You have you guys have made an effective uh, cut down to these bad boys. Cool. As you fly back to the land, it took about five minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it took a little while. No, not too long. It. <clears throat> uh, let's say you, Our it took dreams you. Dreams are coming true. Took you a while to get there. It'll take you a while to get back. So in that process, um, I'll probably stop by and grab the staff. <laughs> Another thing has occurred. Or another thing is occurring. Um, Arlo, you're sleeping. You're getting getting your rest. Jack, the radius is cup pushing out farther and farther and farther. You're almost reaching like the halfway point where you would get, you know, a little bit of the city and a little bit of the the full heart mansion in there, but you're not quite there yet. Can we see it on the map so I can get an idea? Okay. If you were to let go now. <clears throat> We'll say if you're starting right here, we'll say you're, you know, almost to that first flag. Is he down to the P flag? You're almost to that. The, that P flag is supposed to look like a flag. <laughs> and so, that thing, the square on the bottom, is that a statue? 
Uh, fountain and stuff. Fountain and stuff. Gotcha. Yeah, kind of city square. <laughs> Um, be a statue when we so you got you still got the, as the thing has been moving out you still got a good amount of time before you get any sort of meaningful movement or any f- sort of meaningful radius on here you if you let go now all is lost um or at least your goal is lost um no so pressure. yeah it's it's creeping out arrows I'm just sitting here y'all are the ones that got yeah I gotta, ones that gotta deal with I gotta it. make sure you don't get roll perception for me Budman Jones I'm not it. oh yeah that's me uh, powerfully that's a twelve. A 12. In the distance, you hear... Sounding like the banging of a large fist on a wooden gate. (laughs) (laughs) What? I don't know, it's just... Man, that sounds like a fist on a wooden gate. Large fist. Excuse me, like... Big thuds against a wooden gate, excuse me. Um, I, I have in my mind what is knocking on the gate. Uh, apologies. Uh, but you hear that sound. You can also hear, they've arrived at the gate! Men, fire! You can also hear, you can also hear the sound of Kate. They're here! Make sure you use your, the, the arrows with the blinks teeth on them! Send them to another reality! (laughs) Um, and so you can hear a clash happening at the gate. The battle is starting in the place where you are. And you can tell there's stuff going on down there. Um, stop me anytime if there's anything that you'd like to say or do. Jack as well. Um, I can't say or do anything. Jack, you don't hear this yet, actually. You're not can able I to hear, hear anything? Like people... You can hear like the muffled sounds around you. But uh, like if people are talking near me, does it seem like I could hear that? Can I hear like the wind and stuff like that? You can hear it very muffled. It's not quite like um, Charlie Brown teacher speak. Hmm. But it's very hard to make out. Like you would have to focus all your attention to understand some. Like any voices. movie scene where the person, it's their point of view, but they're unconscious and they're like being put in an ambulance or whatever. Yeah, like, gotcha. No big drink is American general, but yeah. Um. Anyway, the <laughs> you, you hear all that from a distance, um, but you also see movement in the trees to the east. To the west. Mm. To the west? To the to west. The Me see that? To or the he west. See that? He see that. Mm. You don't, it's outside of your radius currently, so you see you don't experience anything from outside <laughs> you got to of your radius. radius. Um, but you see some bad boys. I uh, see nothing until I coming see Coming through the forest. How um, close are they? Well, can I tell how close they are? They are a good ways off, a couple mm. hundred feet, but you can see a lot of movement in the forest. That's good to know. Yes. Does it sound like heavy fists? It doesn't sound like heavy fists, but it does. You can over over smaller footsteps. This is you hear a lot of footsteps coming through the forest. They somehow snuck through the trees or something, just like what Duncan said that he didn't think would happen is unfortunately occurring. It seems like they're taking out all the stops to try to deal with what's going on here and not have to deal with you anymore. And there is a there is a full garrison of troops <coughs> as they begin to march out of the trees. There is a full garrison of troops walking towards you, Mr. Eros. I'm not grandma. Um, I can't take care of this. Um, roll another perception roll for me. Let's see if you can like take a head counter of what's going on here. That's a seven. You see a lot of figures. <laughs> it's a lot. You it, this is a this looks like a full garrison of people. You can't tell what type of soldiers are there, but you know there's at least one big figure walking through the trees. Some of the trees are having to lean to the side as this thing walks by. The rest of them look like they're regular-sized orc people. So, Eros, as this is about to happen, you have some time. Uh, They are headed directly towards you through the forest because you guys are, like, right where if you were to travel from west to east through this forest, you are kind of right where you'd pop out. You have some time. They may or may not be headed intentionally straight for you, but they are headed straight for you. I will allow you the time to make a decision or (coughs) decide what it is you think you might want to do before I tell you what happens next. I just want to tell everybody that this is not full powered arrows. This is like a little below halfway arrows. I don't think anybody's going to hear what you do and think, oh, I'm embarrassed for that poor character of his. No, you're playing your character. You're good. I just want to know that he's not powerful right now. He's not even... He ain't going to do nothing to this. This is golf, John. You got to play the ball where it lies. Yeah. <laughs> and yet, Ugh. we both had complete confidence in you. I think that's I how golf works. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
<clears throat> I don't think I can do anything, to be honest. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna sneeze. Three. Achoo! 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 Got a misfire. Woo! So does Do this... Me. This looks like that is gonna take how long for them to get here? They're they're moving pretty quickly. They're moving swiftly through the trees. They're a couple hundred feet away. Their footsteps are... Doom, 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 doom. Roughly eight hours? <laughs> Rough, not, <laughs> not, not roughly eight hours. We're talking like they'll be with they'll be on you in five or six minutes, maybe. Oh. I don't think Grim is going to be that long. Okay. Um, these people were obviously, based on their timing, These were this was like a covert op that they sent into the forest. They must have started earlier than everything else. They're trying to try to outmaneuver you guys a little bit. It started early. So we're like on a field. There's no like... Okay. No real cover. Unless no you get like cover. a hog to run by or something. Yeah. Hide behind it. <laughs> Does anyone else notice that? That was oddly specific. Uh, earlier, you... No. That was in... I don't remember when that was. When they were wild boar in the field. Um, nobody else seems to be running towards this occurrence right now because these people are still in the forest. But also, your perception is at Pretty seven. Bad. So if some, anyone else noticed, you might not be noticing them noticing at this point. What's your passive perception? That is a 12, too. So. Oh. Gosh. Uh, this, this feels like an emergency, but I don't really want to interrupt Jack. Why do y'all do this to me? Just slap him in the back of the head. So, John, <laughs> I'm pretty, just do what, what you're going to yeah. do. I'm pretty sure Jack won't be able to respond. But yeah. While you're thinking, I've, I've, I'm giving you a chance to, to think and mull it over while you're thinking. You're reacting very convincingly while this, what, how this young, I feel this young person would react. Don't know what to do. Do I interrupt? Do I not? How am I going to get out uh, of this? While you're thinking, you, you didn't notice these footsteps appear behind you, but very surprisingly, you hear very heavy footsteps, a group of very heavy footsteps behind you. And before you have a chance to turn around, you hear... Get behind us, boy. Today is not your day to die. Oh, behind you are all the Golnocks that you brought back from the oh, caves sweet. that you guys <laughs> saved their lives. They have noticed this thing happening, and they have now appeared to your aid. They come running down from the thing. You were trying to figure out what to do, and now the Golnocks, they came running down from the barracks where they were getting healed and getting repaired, and the, the eldest one of them approaches you, puts his hand on your shoulder, and pulls you back behind the line that they're forming in front of you, and he tells you, today is not your day to die, boy. So how many Gornox are here? Oh, boy. All um, of them? How many did we say? It was like 12. I think that's what, yeah, we said 12. So all 12 of them, well, <coughs> all, there. we didn't, we, we, I think we said there were like six adults, right? There's, there's like no, half adults. It's or, like, it's like four it's more kids than adults. Yeah. I don't know. Let's well, that's an interesting twist. Let's right write there. and say four. Four adult Golnox form a small line in front of you, Eros. Aww. But they're big. They're strong. That is they're, true. E each of them, they're giants that live under the ground. Like giant type people living under the ground. They're not giant super in stature, but they're big Goliath type people. They're big. They're strong. They're obviously worth many orcs. Per one, they are brandishing clubs and other weapons that they have found, spears and different things that they have found at the Full Heart Manor. A couple of them are either having them tied to their waist or holding them in their hands, big giant chunks of planium that they've picked up from the mines, and they're just holding them like rocks that they're going to smash on these orcs' heads. They are ready to ready to fight in front of you. Um, were you going to say something? Could I make a minor illusion of the fault, like of the orb? Absolutely. I mean, what's a minor illusion? Uh, I'm pretty sure I can... Minor illusion. You create a sound or image of an object within range that lasts for the duration of the illusion also ends if you dismiss it as an action or last the spell again. If you create a sound... No, if you create an Im image of an object such as a chair, money, footprints, or a small chest, it must be no larger than a five-foot cube. Is this... It's not larger than a five-foot cube, so you can make it. The only thing is, can you hold a minor illusion, or what are you going to oh, yeah. do? Can I? It would say. Uh, any other physical interactions with the image reveals that it 
in an illusion because this thing can pass through it. Right, yeah. Uh, so you, so you can create it like floating in place and hold your hand under it. Yeah, so I was thinking of half of the... Oh, I can't believe I forgot their names that fast. Gornox. Gornox. But I was thinking of half of them, two of them, of the Gornox. I make one of them hold them and make the kind of like the thing split. So two of them would face half of the army and two of them would face the other army, kind of. And it would kind of split, so that they would think that one of them has the has the orb, and the other one has the orb. I don't think. Uh, yeah, I don't not, think they'll be able to move it. They're not here for the orb. Oh yeah, I don't they're think they're here for the the mine and all that. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. I don't that. think they even know about the orb. Yeah, they so. they may not. They're here to do some murdering. Yeah, but then okay then, because I was thinking like, well, do they know about the orb? Is that the reason why they're attacking? Okay then. Here and with the illusion, I don't hand. know if you're able to yeah. just move the illusion out. Yeah, I don't think I could do that too. So it's been many weeks, but this army is coming to like seize the seize the mine, right? They're yeah. coming to seize the mine. They're coming because they know they seem to know the servants of the scale are headquartered here. Albert. This whole place has just been a real headache for them, and they're hoping to score some planium and get rid of a headache all in the same genocide. Mm. Well then, <laughs> two birds, one genocide. I just say. <laughs> Thank you, and hope that you survive. <laughs> Finger guns. Um, this is not your day to die. Yeah. Thanks, good luck. <laughs> um, he, yes, it's yours. Yeah, well, he, I don't want to just like, uh, thanks, good luck, kind of swift. It's like, thank you. He turns hope, and says to you as well, sorry, continue. I says, thank you. I really feel bad that you have to take through all of this. I will help as much as I can. Thank you. For centuries, we have protected Moradin's treasure. Today, we protect those worthy enough to claim it. Cool. Sweet. (laughs) 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 Arlo is asleep. All right, so uh, at this point, the forces are coming out of the trees. You are now standing behind four Golnox. You are standing between uh, 40 orc soldiers, one stone giant, and one looks like magician type orc walking towards you. This is a full garrison with a stone giant included. This is a big boy. This is bad news coming at you. Stone giant is not a giant made of stone, correct? Correct. Okay. It is like a giant with like weird stone properties. It's picture picture is the closest thing in uh, the monster manual to like those trolls in Lord of the Rings. In my opinion, one of the closer looking things. This this thing is probably more intelligent than one of those. But it's just a big boy coming at you. Um, Also, as they're coming towards you, they're beginning to pick up speed. More footsteps. More people come to your aid. Having having now heard the people come through the forest and having seen the split off from the main forces, Kate and Torque Fullheart are also arriving to your aid. Kate squeals in, grabs your hand, uh, and she says, don't let the bloodshed today be be in vain. We're putting our faith in you and all of your new friends, Eros. Thank you. Okay, so she turns She turns you as well. my sword. <laughs> <laughs> and my axe. Okay, okay, you really suck at the sword. Try to bow and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, And she turns as well, and uh, Torque, the big, the big brawny fellow as well, arrives. Um, and he says, I believe the gate is pretty well guarded. This is where... We're needed the most. And he turns and he gives his wife, Kate, a big old smooch, passionate, and, you know, as if he thinks this might be, this might be the last place that they're going to be together. Um, and they grit their teeth and prepare for a little battle here. Oh, okay. The teeth gritting came after the, the yeah. passionate smooch. No, so they're, they're still kissing, just grinding their teeth together. I was about to say, that just, sounds awful. That's how I like to kiss, incisor to incisor. <laughs> I like to chew on Lizzie's teeth whenever we smooch. <laughs> Just take a big old bite out of the little bottom incisors. That makes my skin crawl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a little bit. <laughs> It'd be like not. biting glass. Of course not. We don't kiss. Um, <laughs> so, the fight. You know, they turn. Ero- knowing that Eros, you're not, you know, you're, you're not a one-man army, no, right? Not. But you're going to be, you're going to do your best. Wait, what day is it? <laughs> <laughs> you, you're going to do your best to help. Um, Arlo, your rest is continuing. You're still sleeping on the ground. The nap rages on. But these six people have decided that this is where they're going to make a stand to try to protect you. It's worth it. 
to get everybody inside of this orb. It's worth it to let you guys get away with what's going on. Um, and so, very cinematically here, the fight begins. You are standing there in front of Jack, um, and of course there will be some combat here in a moment, but I'm going to give you a little, weave you a little tale here. So, the goal knocks. Kate and Tork sprint towards the enemy. The enemy is now sprinting towards you all. A very brief clash at the head of all these orcs happens. Uh, Kate, Tork, and the Golnox, obviously better combatants than these poorly, relatively poorly trained orcs. They're cutting through them like butter. But also, one of the Golnox goes down. He gets attacked by three orcs at the same time. He go, doesn't go down without a fight. Oh, that's cheating. And he's still, he's fighting, but he goes down and he hits the ground. Um, and the people that kill him turn to kill another orc. Um, the, the Golnox are bigger and stronger than the orcs, but certainly fewer in number. They cut a swath through the garrison, smashing orcish heads and breaking legs, tearing arms off at the shoulder, uh, and one is killed by the soldiers. Another one is stabbed and goes down. Uh, and then one Golnox, wielding a giant hunk of planium, he takes it off of the hook that he had on his belt. He had tied it with a rope. He takes a giant hunk, he drives a knee into an orcish armored chest leaps over that orc and slams the big hunk of planium into the knee of the stone giant and a weird purplish magical misty explosion like you've never seen explodes into the knee of this stone giant disintegrating the leg in a mist of blood and magical dust the stone giant topples and falls to the ground all the orcs nearby are disintegrated and all the ones that are not necessarily nearby are covered in blood and sinew of all the orcs that just exploded from this magical planium explosion. Why did it explode? I don't know. Ask the DM. He could tell you whenever we're done with this whole series or whenever you guys figure something like that out. But pff, it blows up. The stone giant's leg is completely blown off his blood. The giant was a council member. (laughs) (laughs) It's completely blown off his blood spews from his bleeding hip nub. All the orcs standing near him are either mushed on the ground or sticking to the armor of their comrades. By the time this is done, a slightly injured orc mage stumbles out of the the, the dust. Behind him, only six of his men remain after the explosion. The gold knocks have have absolutely disintegrated most of these people. Torque and Kate, knocked back by the explosion, are not destroyed. But the Golnox are nowhere to be seen, except for some pieces of them on the ground. Oof. 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 They are protecting you. Why me? <laughs> but now, a slightly injured orc mage and six of his men are still moving toward Jack and the orb and Eros. Roll initiative. You know, the Golnox, there's blood and guts everywhere. Explosions have happened. There's a dead, there's a, you know, there's a stone giant behind all this action going. Most of a stone giant. Most of a stone giant. He dies. His leg blown completely off by planium. Um, There are a couple of bodies strewn about. uh, Several bodies strewn about. And the other bodies that are strewn about are just like body pudding. Um... Mm -hmm. But you, you're you standing there behind everybody. I just kicked the camera, sorry. People who are watching. Um, but the first person on the list is going to be Arlo. He's going to continue sleeping. Jack, you're going, to conti- you're going to continue pressing the button. Unfortunately, Arlo, the only one who's unconscious, got the highest initiative roll. I should have done something about that. <laughs> is it a sound sleep, or is it like, do I roll for this? No, it's a sound sleep. You're right rolling now. in your sleep. I'm propped up against you. We are rolling. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess, there, I guess there was a huge explosion, Arlo. Should we see if you wake up? Roll a constitution saving throw. Oof. I don't want to wake up. I should have kept my mouth shut. 22. It's a nat 20 plus 2. You are still asleep. Oh, my gosh. Hey. Uh, okay. All right. I do have experience with sleeping through major hurricanes. So Excellent. Maybe this is where it rolls in my character. This man slept through Hugo. I did. Through Hugo. All right. Not the whole thing. Okay. Orc number four is going to move down here to get up on. Did I take the? I mean, that's not a grim. What a silly. I slept through a monster truck rally. That's saying something. I sat beside you while you did that. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I slept through Winter Jam. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. <laughs> All right, moving on. This orc is going to come down and try to swing at Torque with his great axe. Zaba Zaba Zoom Zam Zop. Um, he is going to roll a 16, which is. Hold on. Hold on. Really? Will and We have. War noises coming, yeah. courtesy of Juice. Yeah. Um, juice. Does he like his new toy? That He's is going to be a hit milk. on Mr. Tort. Hmm. Unfortunate like. He will, will it. Dang, that does a lot of damage too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to take 14 damage real quick. Oh, oh boy. Right out the gate. Uh, he's not as tough as y'all, necessarily. But he's also not body pudding at this point, so... Correct, which is great news for him. Um, body pudding. Now, there's another band name for you. Body pudding. What was the one from earlier? Misty. Misty Proboscis? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I haven't rolled their initiative yet. Oops. Sorry, guys. Tonight, we'll have... Misty Proboscis headlining for body pudding. Yeah. <laughs> Name of the first album Poseidon's Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys are silly, boys. <laughs> oh my gosh. What is that? Why did we allow that boy in here? Because you said he sounded sad out there. Yeah, yeah, he if we slow that down here. and loop it, it sound like a didgeridoo. <laughs> He's just staring at me and chewing on the rubber ball. Yeah, that's wild. All right, so <laughs> Torque is going to take some damage. Uh, unfortunately, next on the list. Um, Where's the D10? Oh, come on. Orc number five and Orc number six is going to move up here next to their mage okay. captain to try oh, to help yeah, them out. Um, and then it's going to be Kate's turn. Kate is going to move to this orc and try to help her who's Bondo by chopping at that orc. Who's Bondo? Who's Bondo? Um, and she's going to swing. Is? Bondo came up today at work. Nice. It's like a patch for cars. Mm. <gasps> I know all about that Bond. Not all about I know about that Bondo. Keith Corvette was 35% Bondo. <laughs> it takes like sure chocolate. <laughs> it sure was. Um, <laughs> Matt Black. That's going to hit. She's going to get one hit, and then she's going to crit fail. So she's only going to get one hit out of this fellow. Um, 1d6 plus 2. Man, a whole 5 damage on this. Orc. I always Good forget her. I have extra attack. Kate's just not a heavy hitter. She is not. I never she's used to killing But she's persistent. Well, you, you are she comes up and chops through a piece of the orc's armor and draws some blood. Um, and she says, get back, draw, and slices it. Um, Orc number one is going to move down to try to chop her. Shoot. And no, then no, no. Orc number two and Orc number three are going to come down and try to get around their captain. This thing is going to chop, and of course it's going to successfully hit. So Kane, Kane taught me about, might be about to die. <laughs> um... <laughs> Luckily, she has way more health than what I have written here. That's good. Um, so she's only going to take four damage on that one. So she gets hit by a great axe, but she's able to lance the blow away and not take all of the damage from it. Um, after that is going to be the orc mage's turn. And the orc mage is going to bring out both of his hands and cast fire shield. Thin and wispy flames wreathe around his body for the duration of the spell, shedding bright light. The flames provide a... Sh- looks like it's providing him some sort of shield. He's essentially flamed on himself. Um, so he's got some flamey shield. Um, Flame shield is a cool one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like it. Um, and now it is Eros' turn, sir. Sweet. Uh, I get closer, like, right there, so I can still be within range of Jack, but mm-hmm. still reachable to them, too. So, 
Okay. How far do I need to be to hit them? With what? With 100 feet Eldritch Blast. Oh, you're well within 100 feet. Oh, sweet, then. You might want to move to this, yeah. depending on who you want to hit, who you want to hit. I'd like to hit those two that are hitting them. Okay, so maybe you want to, like, move around here, maybe, and try to fire between between them, and then kind of like that, just kind of... I'll let, yeah, they're, they're, you'll, they're moving around. We'll see what you can do. Roll to hit them boys with that Eldritch Blast. You reach out a hand, calling in the dark power that you've agreed to allow into your life by accident, maybe. By accident, so that's an 8 plus 6, so that is... 14. 14. That's a hit. Oh, that's a hit? On those orcs, it sure is. Uh, that's going to hit, too, since that okay. is 17 plus 6. Well, no, 17 plus 5. Okay. So, so you're 13 gonna... still going to hit? Yeah. Okay. You're going to split your beam? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to hit those two. Okay. Four. Four, one, and four. Two. So, orc four took four damage? Mm-hmm. And the other one took two. Okay. They take your force damage as if it doesn't. They don't even barely feel it. One of them, one of them is hurting a little bit after Kate's chopping, but the oh, other right. one is That's he's it. barely got hit by it. But he does take the damage. Um, moving on, it's going to be um, Orc Number Four's turn. He is going to take this opportunity to con- continue trying to chop on Kate. Um, he is going to fail. He brings down his axe, but Kate takes up the sword that you gave her and swats it to the side. The axe digs into the dirt. Um, shoot, that was the wrong orc. We'll just trade him. Got a long I was just thinking that. <laughs> um, kind of video game style. The other orcs are going to just kind of stand back, waiting for an opening. They're not going to all get in there and like try to pummel you. Um, they're going to stand back, waiting for an opening a little bit. Um, and then orc number, the other one is going to try to attack Tork again. Never mind, sorry, I've missed some Tork's turn. Completely, actually. Whoops. It's Tork's turn before that, before that hit. So his hit will still miss Kate, but it's his turn. He's going to try to attack the one right in front of him. Please excuse me, my mistakes. Um, he's going to swing his long sword that he's got. He's going to crit fail on his first attack. And then nat 20 on the second attack. Sweet. Great news. Um, which means his long sword is going to do 1d8 plus 3. That means he's going to be doing 2d8 plus 3 on this young man. So that's 4. And then 5 is 9 plus 3 is 12 damage on orc number 4. Orc number 4, he cuts deep. Right into the chest of orc number 4. It barely stays alive. It drops down to one knee barely clinging to its life at this point um, as Torque chops on it. Uh, the other one was a miss. Same, you know, we're just going to tell you what happened with those other orcs. Or they all missed or stood there waiting, kind of. Um, and then the Kate is going to, again, try to chop the orc that she is standing in front of, which is orc numero one. And she's going to roll enough to hit that orc. And she's going to do 1d6 plus 2 damage. Nice! She's going to do 8 damage to him. Exceptional. I'm just playing a game by myself over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Is it going good, though? Yeah, it's going great. Nice! Um, this Who's other winning? orc is going to move down over here and try to... They're trying to surround you all. Oh kind of stepping in a little bit. Um, the other ones are kind of going to move in the same way. And finally, it will be the Orc Mage's turn. What he is going to do is move his papers somewhere else. Um, and then he is going to cast Scorching Ray. 120 feet, he creates three rays of fire and hurls them at targets within range. He's going to split his uh, rays, so um, make a ranged spell attack for each ray. Ranged spell attack would be dexterity? No. No. It's, no, it's just your um, still spell just casting. Spell. spell casting, gotcha. Um, all right. He's going to try to aim his first ray at Kate. He's going to miss. His second ray is headed for Torque, um, which would be... 
A miss. Do they see me? I'm pretty sure they do see me. Unfortunately, <laughs> Arrow C rolls a 17 to hit you with his third rate. Oh, oh yeah. shoot. Uh, it's on. Armor class. Oh, yeah, I need to update my AC. Yeah, that's a 16. But for the first time, I'm going to use Krong Strong. And I'm going to say Krong Strong. And isn't that an automatic, automatic miss on them when I say it? For the armor that you had? Yeah. Yeah. It, or it negates the damage from one attack or something like right, that. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and yeah. Then I get a 50% chance of getting it back or a long rest. Right, yes. Okay, so roll a d20 now. So, he fires off three flat scorching rays. <laughs> the first one passes by Kate. She dodges it expertly. The second one hits Torque in some of his chest armor and it bounces off. The final one is get, hits you directly center mass in the chest and it begins to get hot and you feel the ray hitting you and you look at the, the mage in his face and you say, Krong Strong. And then you you can feel the armor just cool down instantly and absorb all the damage. Um, so now roll a d20 for me. That's a nine. A nine. Unfortunately, you do not recharge. So you have lost your opportunity to take another hit nice. um, until tomorrow. Well, until, you, yeah, it wasn't until, yeah, it is tomorrow, not long rest. It doesn't work I, like Yeah, I think that. it was once per day, I think. Yeah, it was once per day. Somewhere in the world, Krong stops what he's doing and just kind of looks up and looks smile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it um, works. Now it's your turn, buddy boy. Me? Yep. Sweet. Uh, So how does Twerk feel? Um, he's doing all right. Okay, then. He looks like he's taking a hit or two. He's a little bit injured, but he's 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 moving moving fast. Sweet. Looking uh, strong. I'm gonna move closer, close enough to hit the mage since I'm pretty sure is that is it farther? You still within a hundred feet? Yeah. Is it? My... Oh yeah, you're you're within a hundred feet now. Okay, I'm just making sure. So that is going to. Are you gonna stay where you are and try to hit him? Mm -hmm. Well, a little bit closer to feel like I'm going to be, be more accurate, just to feel like it. Okay. Oops. And two beams are going to hit him. Two beams. Firing two beams. You raise up your hand again. <laughs> well, a 16 hit. A 16. Doobity doobity doop. Uh, will hit. Yes. Sweet. Well, a 11 hit. 11 will not hit. All right. So that is... Uh, yeah. That is eight. Yeah, that's just eight damage. Eight damage. You fire one of the blasts. He's able to, he takes his arm and dodges to the side of one of your beams, but he doesn't expect the second one, so he dodges into it and takes how many damage, you said? Eight damage. He takes eight, eight damage. Eight necrotic damage, actually. Necrotic Wait, damage. Yeah, isn't Eldritch Blast necrotic no, it's damage? Force damage. Oh, You're force right, damage? It's force damage. Oh, my bad then. Okay. Eldritch Blast is D12, isn't it? D10. D10? Mm -hmm. What you been rolling? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Is that, what else will you do? Is that all? Uh, I think that's it. Okay. Always be thinking about your items or anything else if you want to use something creative. Yeah, I forgot Kong Shang yeah. when. If you want to like jam one of those toothpicks down into the mage's throat and then, you know, snap your fingers or whatever and <laughs> we explode. <Yeah. laughs> How um, far underground are we? But good job on Krong Strong. I'd forgotten all about Krong yeah. Strong. I forgot fight. about it too when I got hit for a lot of damage. Yeah. Most overpowered item in the game. Yeah. Hey, sometimes you gotta, whenever your homeboy starts at level three, you gotta pat him out a little bit. Um, I don't deserve it. <laughs> num so back to the orcs. Orcs number four is gonna continue. He's gonna get up off of his knee and try to chop it. Uh, no, it's not. It is Torque's turn. Let's see if Torque can finish off this one orc in front of him. He critted. Uh-oh. We lost our monitor. No, hang on. Okay. And it's still recording! Yay! Well, that's that's just the TV. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Torque crits again with his damage. So that means he's going to roll 2d8 plus 3. 3. 8. Which... So he definitely kills this one orc in front of him. Orc number four goes down. Oh. He stabs him. Next, he's going to move to the orc that's attacking his wife and try to attack that orc as well. That is also going to hit, but only for one one set of damage. It's not a crit. So he's going to do five damage to this orc. This orc is obviously a little bit better trained. 
it's blocking, it's taking some of that damage, but also it's, they're wearing him down. He's about to go. Um, um, after that, orc number four, of course, is dead. Orc number five is going to move in, try to take him out. Oh, no. Orc number six is coming towards you, Mr. Heroes. I don't deserve this. <laughs> <laughs> um, orc, number, orc number five is going to try to attack Torque in the back. Um, he is not going to hit, though. He tries to swing his great axe down, but as Torque takes his blade out from the flesh of the orc in front of him, he brings his arm back up to swat the axe away, and again, it goes to the side and digs into the ground with its heavy weight pushing it in. Um, next is going to be Kate. Kate is going to take out her short sword again and try her best to stab into the heart of the the same orc number one that they are trying to kill. She is able to make a hit. She rolls her d6. It is not enough damage to kill the orc, unfortunately. It is not enough damage to kill. Um, the orc still stands before her, but it is definitely struggling struggling to stay alive. Stay alive. The same situation is happening uh, here. Orc number two is going to come in to try to press against her, and then the other one is going to try to come down, heading towards you, Eros. Um, the other orc number two is going to try to attack Kate as well. Uh, it is going to succeed in that attack with a dirty old great axe. A little bit rusty. Holy moly. Um, going to take a, going to, she's going to take a 10 damage on that one. Great axe slices through some of her leather armor on her back and it slices into her flesh and blood begins to trickle down her back. She, she yelps like Padme in Attack of the Clones. Ah! <laughs> just like Padme used to sound. <laughs> yep, that sounded just like it. <laughs> um, did you play Padme in that movie? I sure did. <laughs> I sure did. You did a fine job. Scream double. <laughs> I'm Natal Keith Portman. Um, it is now the Orc Mage's turn, and he is going to still stay back there and fire some more scorching rays. He's a commander. He's not trying to get down and dirty. Um, so he's going to fire some more scorching rays at you. He's going to, again, do three. One, two, and three. His first one is going to roll to try to attack Kate. Kate is, again, definitely off to the injury on her back. She's able to dodge the scorching ray. Torque also is able to get out of the way of the scorching ray, but arrows as well. None of his scorching rays find their mark. You're able, you're able to jump up as the scorching ray passes between your legs. It goes directly past Jack's nose, and he can almost smell barbecue <laughs> in his position in the ether, holding down the button. Ooh. All the while, the 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 circle is being pressed backwards, farther, farther, and farther. And it is Eros's turn. Sweet. Uh, I think they got it. So I'm going to do the same thing, and I oh, will. I hope they got it, actually. So I am going to hit the mage. All right. You're going to shoot past these other guys who are getting towards you and go for the mage? Uh, yeah. So that is a... That's not going to hit for 11. Nope. Oh, sweet. Yeah, that's a 24. Nice. Laser blast finds its target. Sweet. Eldritch blast, excuse me. Seven, so that is 13 damage. 13 damage on the mage. Well done, boy. I know. The mage obviously looks tough. There's something special about these mages. They must breed them different or wherever orcs come from. You're not really sure. You haven't been alive that long. You don't know much about that kind of history. Well, did I um, see him do the fiery shield? Uh, Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. yeah um, okay. But it looks like your, your, you know, Eldritch Blasts are passing right through that shield. It doesn't Sweet. seem like that the shield is helping very much from your Eldritch Blast. Sweet. But he takes a big old barrel of force right to his chest. Boom, his, oh, an arm slings back right after he had fired a Scorching Ray. Um, and I am going to... Um, Talk back. Say the following... Grim, as you pass over the walls of the city, moving towards back to the location, or as you are flying in, what what is you're you're headed towards the city? What are your thoughts? You um, see, sorry, sorry. You see orcs at the gate, enemies pounding on the gate. You see people firing arrows into the crowd. At whenever their arrows find flesh, <laughs> bloop, they disappear. Uh, the enemy, the orcs, disappear from existence. The arrows that you have helped them create are working to quell the danger. 
the gate seems relatively firmly planted currently. You look back behind you and you can see uh, orc landing craft rowing towards the city. But depending upon how things go, they may never make it there. They're moving quite slowly. Um, and ahead of you, of course, you can see a battle raging in the field where you had left your friends. Um, I didn't know... I, well, I knew about the fort as I was leaving, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so... Um, my thought is the gate is fine. I'm going to go to the heart of the issue. Okay. Because, like, like, I'm just... If Jack falls or gets, it's messed up in any way, this whole thing is kaput. So, yeah. um, can I, like start the transformation process mid-air <laughs> superhero landing and going uh, yeah. I want well I want to try to fall on one of the orcs oh, if nice. possible but that's okay chaotic but it still be really cool so you begin so as you fly over the walls trying to time this perfectly losing altitude um you're you begin the transformation as you pass quickly through the air that you come down through the clouds yeah the whistling begins what was just air passing through you your face begins to form out of the mist and your hands and your legs and your arms begin to form out of the mist as you what rocket does that cloud look like to you <laughs> as as you rocket towards eros defending the only two friends you currently have left in the world Will the party be able to defeat their enemies without disturbing Jack and his magical orb absorbing the town of Buckland? Find out possibly next week on another episode of Dungeon Boys. Thanks for listening. <laughs>